Hello everyone, and welcome back to Build for Every Block. Today we're doing... Ancient Debris? Am I reading that right? Oh, there's no way. Damn. Well, put her back up there, I guess. Uh, today we're doing Ancient Debris. Uh, well, God graced me last time. Let's hope he does again this time, because I'm gonna need to cash in on some miracles. Ah, uh, well, no time to waste. Uh, to the reference board. So to start off with, yes, this block is both ugly and expensive. It took me a while to come up with something that made sense since it's a dark brown and weird scaly texture. Uh, however, after putting my brain cells together to try and come up with some semblance of an idea, I came up with two ideas. Either a mud house where the ancient debris is used as texturing, uh, using this image here as reference, or a rusting robot where the ancient debris is the crusty bits at the end of extremely rusted metal. Uh, the latter came to me after seeing this image right here. And after comparing it to actual rust, as you can see, the texture is somewhat similar and the color is pretty close. Uh, so I ended up going with this idea. Also, another reason why I didn't go with the mud house was because the ancient debris was only really going to be used as a texture block that I thought wouldn't be that fair. Uh, but also to keep in mind that I am slightly stretching the rules here as there is more robot than rust, but that's to be expected because if I had more rust than robot, I wouldn't really have anything to build. Uh, but that aside, back to the robot sitting next to the cliffside, this is going to be the environment around the build. But as the robot itself is still relatively intact, that is no good. Since ancient debris is going to be the crusty bits on the end of the metal, uh, the robot has to be relatively destroyed by the elements in order for this to make sense. So, after creating my own robot and, you know, making it look cute, I need to plan out the actual build itself since a fully intact robot is of no use to me. I made a few drawings to plan out the build, obviously made in MS Paint because I'm such an artist, uh, but jokes aside, these are really useful as they help me understand what the end goal is going to look like. Flying blind is a terrible idea, but building blind is a recipe for disaster and terribly bland builds. Now, I actually made two plans as the original idea felt like I was missing something. Uh, with just an empty robot husk and an abandoned shack that didn't really seem that interesting. So I went back to the drawing board, or in this case, MS Paint Canvas, and drew yet another masterpiece. This time, I plan on not having the shack, but instead a base inside the robot. Honestly, when I came up with this idea, I felt like a genius. However, this may be a re eureka moment, but that doesn't necessarily make the build good. I still need to execute this. And on that note, let's get to building, shall we? Okay, obviously to start off with, I need to build the robot fully first, as I will deploy a method I personally like to use when making destroyed builds, which is to build it fully intact and then destroy it. Obviously, I'm not going to be building it exactly, as I made some modifications to the original shown earlier, and there isn't any point in building it all on iron blocks just for me to replace the ball with exposed copper anyways. Uh, but for the most part, this is relatively intact. This may take longer, being as I have to build the whole thing and then go in afterwards to get the desired effect, but doing it this way will allow me to create relatively realistic battle scars and holes in the build, uh, and this works especially well for debris, as it gives me a better idea of how much of it I actually created by making these scars. Now obviously this build doesn't have debris around it, but since this is more complex than a stone wall, I kind of need to build it fully first, or else I won't really know what I'm building. Uh, however, for any of you at home who want to make a battle scarred castle, deploying this method works wonders, as it really gives you an idea of how much debris you actually created by making such massive holes in the walls. Now that the Roboman is finished, it's time to, well, destroy him. Uh, I'm sorry again, Mr. Roboman, but it's a necessary sacrifice for aestheticism. Please leave a like on the video for his sacrifice. <laughs> he will be remembered. Uh, or at least I will, if you don't. Some major things I had in mind when adding these rust marks and whatnot are, are the gradients of the rust, the shape of the rust, how the rust ate away at the robot, and which should lie inside the robot as I ripped it open with rust wounds. And it sounds a bit gory for a Minecraft build taken out of context, uh, but whatever, these really were the things I had in mind. The rust palette I created was both a combination of color and texture, 
I want it to go from a rough metal color to rust brown. And as for texture, uh, somewhat rough to lumpy to flaky. Because obviously extremely rusted metal is flaky. Honestly, I think the palette turned out okay, but I felt that the gradient wasn't as smooth as I would have liked. Uh, because there aren't many lumpy brown blocks. There are obviously lots of brown blocks, but would you consider them to be lumpy? Uh, that's another argument altogether. As for the other parts of the build, I used basalt as internal piping, iron bars for wiring, uh, and deep slate redstone ore as connectors. And as for the circuitry, I replaced the redstone blocks also with deep slate redstone ore to give it a kind of dirty look to it. But I also replaced the smooth basalt with regular basalt as it has less defined lines on it to make it look more tattered and weathered. For the face, since it was a screen, emulating broken glass was the effect I was going for, and I think it turned out pretty good. Whenever you create broken glass, a great way to achieve this is to create an area where the glass is left relatively intact, and then add some extra blocks poking out in random directions to emulate the jagged edges from the broken parts. I also added a bird's nest in the head just because I thought it would be perfect addition since I wanted to add something to fill its empty head. Wait, uh, I didn't mean to make Mr. Old Man catch strays from the grave, uh, but whatever. Uh, that aside, uh, I made a massive hole in the middle of the body and hung that massive metal piece inside the body, uh, and this will be used as a centerpiece for the build coming up next. Now that Mr. Roboman has gone through the gauntlet, it's time to actually build what's going to be inside him. My idea was going to be somewhat post-apocalyptic, kind of scrappy, uh, because obviously nothing clean is going to come out of this giant rusty robot. Uh, initially in my plans, I thought of adding a metal piece as the entrance ramp. However, as the only block in the robot palette that has slabs as the copper, I felt that this wasn't going to look good, so instead I decided to make a split staircase design to go into the entranceway. Uh, the entrance, I initially thought just having it as open, uh, but since this is supposed to be kind of a hideout, uh, I felt that that didn't make sense since this is supposed to be you know, moderately fortified. Uh, so I made a simple wood arch and a wood wall with a castle-like parapet on top. Maybe it's called a battlement, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you guys tell me in the comments, I have no idea. Uh, as for the interior though, I thought incorporating the front core as central lighting would be cool. Uh, just the light hanging from a huge metal disc. From there, having a central hole in the base would add some height to the build. Making it the furnace area just seemed right. Could have been the storage area, but then I felt that the furnaces wouldn't really make sense to be in a house. Uh, so I ended up putting the furnaces here. As for storage, I made a loft on the side where I could put lots of chests, barrels, and some crafting tables. Uh, since this is a hideout, or call it a fort, really up to you what you want to call it, uh, adding lots of beds makes sense here, since, you know, hideouts and forts typically have multiple people, so having lots of beds here makes sense. Uh, I also added a spiral staircase to get up to the metal plate hanging from the roof. On here I wanted to add a lookout, or an elytra entrance, it's up to you what you want to call it, uh, and another spiral staircase to get up to the upper lookout. And then up, up here, uh, relatively basic decorations, and also, as you kind of noticed throughout the build, I changed some of the spruce planks to mangrove logs, uh, just to make them look a bit dirty. Uh, obviously, this isn't just random placements, I kind of placed them in plank lengths alongside the spruce planks. So if you ever intend on doing this, pay attention to which way the planks are pointing. Now, of course, there's a little secret in the back, but since it's a secret, you know, I won't spoil anything. All right, we are done. This honestly feels a little along the lines of a kid fort made in a robot's innards. Uh, maybe along the lines of something similar to Sebekui Bisco's uh, children's fort. As you can kind of see from the image here. Uh, not that I referenced this at all during the making of this build, but after reviewing what it looks like, I couldn't help but feel some similarities between the two. Uh, but anyways, if you enjoyed the build, make sure to like the video if you haven't done so already, and subscribe for more from this series. Uh, but that's everything for me. See you guys next time.